Is this working? Is this on? I don't want to touch anything. <sighs> that didn't work. Yes, I'm aware I'm wearing a onesie. I'm aware that I'm shooting a video to a bunch of people that I don't know. I'm aware it's bright yellow. Just trying to stay relevant. <laughs> it's the video you've all been waiting for. That is, if you're in my cohort and knew I was doing this video. I bought a cactus and it just spiked me. God damn it, Clive. It's time. So one of the things we've been learning about recently is the A, B, oh god, I've got the alphabet. The A, B, C, D, E approach to nursing. Airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure. The story behind that is you have a patient, they're not in a good way, they're possibly deteriorating. You do an A, B, C, D, E assessment of this patient, then you escalate it or you monitor them and essentially you save the patient's life. All good and well, you may say, that is until they send you off to do it in a simulation room in front of your entire cohort. So, guys, as I did in one of my previous videos, I'm here to tell you a story. Today it's not my story. It's the story of two young fledgling nurses. They wish, they wish to remain anonymous, so for video purposes we will call them... They did have, they, they did ask me like, we're like, oh, let's have some secret names, but I've forgotten. So let's call them S-Cat and V-Dog. So you have essentially three rooms in a line. The first room has a massive screen and on the massive screen is the visual of what is happening in the room next to you, okay? So you can see everything that's happening in the room next to you on the screen. And you can hear everything that's going on as well because the microphones from said room that way are like attached to the walls, they're like speakers in the walls. It's a really cool room, as long as you're not the person in that room. So now we're in the centre room. In the centre room you have a massive dummy. He's huge. His thigh is about the same width as me and they stick wigs on him and they put him in clothes. This dummy is terrifying. His eyes move, he blinks, his pupils react to light, he has a pulse, he breathes, he makes terrifying breathing sounds. He's in this room, on a bed, in some form of deteriorating patient style. He's attached to a monitor, there are a load of equipment around you, oxygen masks, IV lines, there's also a cot with terrifying dummy baby children in it. And either side of that room, I call it police glass. It's essentially that glass you get where you can't see that way but everyone can see you. So so the people in that room over there that we discussed earlier who are watching you on the screen can also watch you through this massive glass door thing. So they're there watching you on the screen, watching you through this glass thing and you're in there with your microphone on. If you feel like Madonna in your nursing rectangle uniform with a deteriorating patient, you are just there hoping for the best and everyone's watching and judging you. Already terrifying, am I right? Moving on to the next room. In this room, You've got the person who is leading the session, you've got the lady who does the simulation voice, aha, uh -huh. the dummy talks to you. Again, they can see you, you can't see them. They can hear you and they can speak to you over the microphone. So you do your thing and they control what happens. So for example, on the screen has all of the vital signs. They will lower the blood pressure or they will lower the saturation level and it's up to you to sort of spot that while you're doing your assessment so that nothing bad happens. Flick. S-Cat and V-Dog. So what I have in front of me here are some notes on how my two colleagues and friends said that their simulation went. S-Cat and V-Dog walk into the room, they're given handover and they're set loose on this patient. Let's call patient Sally Stoner. So they walk around, they do A, they do B, perfect. That is up until C. While they're midway through their observations for circulation, the patient goes, I have a rash, nurse. I assume they did it like that. Then the patient starts struggling to breathe. Oh, I can't breathe. Like that. So this is where the problems start. During handover, V-Dog and S-Cat heard different things. S-Cat heard that the patient had an insect bite and V-Dog heard that the patient had been in a motorcycle accident. V-Dog makes a call to the medical team, says, we have a patient here, they were in a motorcycle accident. The person on the other end of the phone literally just says, I don't know who this patient is, and hangs up. They then come to the conclusion that actually it was an insect bite and therefore this patient is going into anaphylactic shock, an allergic reaction. Reaction. and as a result they need to get an EpiPen into them. They can't find the EpiPen anywhere so they call back. Where's the EpiPen? Nobody tells them because you're supposed to sort of find out yourself. And what happens next? V-Dog makes the age-old error of forgetting that our patient, our dummy, has ears. So V-Dog says, shit, our patient's going to die. To which point the dummy goes, what do you mean I'm going to die? 
SK had the classic reaction and to be honest, I thought it was a pretty good idea. Walked over to the patient, covered the dummy's ears and said, I think this patient's going to die. Straightened out the patient's wig and then left. When I asked SK why she straightened the wig, she said, so that the patient could die in dignity. They call back and they're on the phone and they're pleading for help. Where's the EpiPen? Where's the EpiPen? Our patient needs help. Where's the EpiPen? And they were told to call another team. So in the end, they just grab the resus bag and without any defibrillation training, just start resuscitating the patient. It was at this point our lecturer decided to stop the scenario. At the end of this story, guys, my advice to you. Number one, don't tell the patient they're gonna die. It doesn't go well. Number two, if you can't find something, your lecturer isn't gonna help you. Number three, listen in handover. That is it for another nursing video this week. Next week, it is a Wednesday video, so it's a student struggles video. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.